It's the end of the world as we know it. Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran. Now, if you have read Bewilderment, you will know that our main father figure, Theo, doesn't particularly care. It's quite a pessimistic view at the end of the world and climate change. However, if you're his son, Robin, you will care, oh, like way too much sometimes. Good evening, campers. As part of the Booker Boy Book Club, we read Pulitzer Prize winner Richard Powers Bewilderment, which was the book that everyone was anticipating because it had to follow the overstory. A book that made me fall in love with trees way more, like way more than I was expecting. How was Bewilderment even going to live up to the hype that even I had upon this book? Well, Bewilderment doesn't look at Earth. It looks outside to some degree. Theo is an astrobiologist. He looks at the ecosystems outside of Earth. How are they going to survive? If they can survive, is there life on them? And if there is life, how, how does it survive? Could it survive? Theo is not alone in his external exoplanet escapades. He has his son, Robin. Now, Robin has something different about that. What is that difference? Well, we don't really know. Richard Powers won't tell us. He says that he's on a spectrum, but isn't everyone on a spectrum? We're not entirely sure exactly what it is. Readers will see quite clearly that Robin has difficulty maintaining and controlling his emotions. He gets angry. His father just allows him to do some things or will just take the easy route because he understands that if he gets in the way, some things might go awry, he might explode. And Theo is going to spend quite a lot of time with Robin. Robin is not in school. He smashed his friend's face in with a thermos, so has naturally decided to take him out of school and allow him to reconnect in nature. And at the beginning of this novel, it feels as though it was meant to be one of the characters of the overstory. If you've read the overstory, you'll know what I mean. We get beautiful nature right there, which I expect from Powers after reading the overstory. But then we look up, past the mountains, past the sky. What's going on outside? Theo is captivated because that's his line of work. Robin is just a curious kid. He wants to know what's out there? Is there anything out there? Could anything be out there? For a young kid, he's almost grappling with the Fermi paradox, which is, well, if there is intelligent life, and if there's infinite amount of space and infinite possibilities, why haven't we as humans come across them yet? Why can't we find life of the myriad possibilities in answering the Fermi paradox, Robin has his own and Theo is drawn to how this young kid tries to grapple with big questions, with things that are bigger than himself. Foremost, Robin is a sensitive kid. He doesn't eat animals and we have a very brief description of the awkward nature of bringing that up at a Thanksgiving dinner. The big question that stumps Robin is climate change, something that we are all dealing at the moment. How do you solve the global eco crisis? Well, his father's not too concerned about it. He's more focused on outside of Earth. And there's a very pessimistic tone that Powers gives, which is, well, have we just gone past the point that we can rectify this? And if we can't rectify it, is there any point in doing steps that will ultimately just leave to the inevitable that we think is going to happen? Robin, however, is more optimistic. We won't touch on it at some points because Powers in this novel, I don't think he knows where he wanted to go with this. I know he wanted to talk about climate change, but shoehorned a 14-year-old clear cameo of Greta Thunberg to appear on the TV. Ugh. This book doesn't even know what it wants to be. It would be very simplistic to do a eco-critical view of this book, but Powers 
like powers, is is captivated by scientific means and methods. And we have in here Theo, who rather than going down a route of diagnosis, decides to take a experimental form to help his son with his emotions. Which basically means that Theo, through a computer, is mapping his brain onto his dead mums. Yeah. Yeah, we need to talk about the dead mum. Theo met Ali in university and she very much is in tune with nature. They've had this son, Robin, but due to a car accident, she veered off and died. Theo's clearly mourning the mum, but also she was pregnant during the time. Robin's trying to connect the pieces that he has in order to connect to his mum, but the only way he really does connect is through connecting via the computer by mapping his brain, which at first is literally connecting dots together. Sudden and petty side note. I know the joke about people speaking in cursive, but did Robin literally have to speak in italics? Despite the opulence of these themes and subject that Powers is talking about, he makes it almost piecemeal. It's very predictable of where this is going to go until the end. And I don't care if you haven't read the book yet. Just, just turn this off now. He literally just says, my son died. And you're just thinking, what do you mean? What do you mean just that the son died? Like, out of nowhere. I, I, I had to read 80 pages again to figure out if I had missed anything. If I had missed anything. I, I did not understand why that was just like shoehorned in the end. And Theo has always used the exoplanets as a way of carving his son down. That's his way of carving himself down, but also that because Robin's mind is mapped onto the mums, he he has all what was the this end this end I do not give a singular twaddle. There was no foreshadowing. There was nothing that was going to say that Robin, however, towards the end, Powers refers to him as Robbie, which I thought was a really nice way of showing that this kid is growing up and he's taking control of his own future. He's allowing himself to change. And Theo has to understand that he needs to change with his son. Doesn't really matter though, because he's dead in the end. My gosh! The end of the book could have been set in Calvin Klein underwear, because guess what? It was pants! I... What? What is this? Bewilderment bemused me, because Powers, from one of the best books that I have read, the book itself, the, the book itself, similar to this art copy, is just a bit limp and flippy floppy. Um... You could just have a three, Richard Powers. You could just have a three. Just remember, people, this guy wrote the overstory. What happened?